Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to make a PLC program for a mixing tank and I have the diagram for the mixing tank where we have two solenoids for the two inlet valves. We have inlet 1 and inlet 2. Each inlet has a solenoid valve. We have solenoid valve A and solenoid valve B. And then we have the motor for agitation. We have a float switch and solenoid valve C which is for the drain. When the start button is pressed, solenoids A and B energize, that permitting the two liquids to begin filling the tank. When the tank is filled, the float switch trips thus de-energizing solenoids A and B and starts the agitation motor to mix the two liquids together. The agitator runs for one minute and after one minute has elapsed, the motor turns off and solenoid C is energized to drain the tank. When the tank is empty, the float switch de-energizes solenoid C, thus closing the drain valve. A stop button can be used to stop the process at any point. I have opened my Simatic Manager and I have created my first network. I'll introduce a normally open contact uh, that will be for the start button, then for the stop button, and then I'll introduce a coil. I'll give them addresses. Let me assign this I0.0 .0 for the symbol. Let's call it start. Then we have this other input, I0.1. I will then create another network. In this network, we shall have a normally open contact and a normally closed contact. Then we shall have two coils in parallel to represent the two solenoid valves A and B. This one will be the, uh, the start memory M0.0. .0. This one will be the signal from the float switch. That one will be I0.2. And for the symbol, this will be the float switch. Then we shall have this solenoid valve. Let's call it Q4.0. And we shall have Q4.1 and that will be solenoid B. From this logic, we can see that when the start button is pressed, uh, this normally open contact will close. And therefore, uh, since the float switch is a normally closed contact, Solenoid valves A and B will open automatically, thus allowing the two fluids flowing into the tank. I will insert another network. And on this network, this is where we shall have the agitator motor. But we are told that the agitator motor only runs for one minute. And therefore we need to introduce a timer. It will be a pulse timer. Because we want the motor to get power, for only one minute and then it will go off. For this motor to come on, our start memory must be storing a bit logic of one and therefore I'll introduce a normally open contact and its address will be that for the start memory, M0.0. .0. Also, uh, this trigger will have to come from the float switch and so I'll include a normally open contact this time and give it the address for the float switch, I0.3. Uh, then for the timer, this will call it T1. And for the time value, it will be one minute. In this statement, we are told that a stop button can be used to stop the process at any point. Therefore, we'll come back to our timer and this reset signal will come from the stop button. I0.1. This will be Q4.2. And this is the agitator motor. I 
I will now introduce the fourth network. And here, our output will be the drain valve. So I can include a coil. Its address will be Q4.3. We are told that uh, the agitator runs for one minute and after one minute has elapsed, the motor turns off and the solenoid C is energized to drain the tank. This means here we'll also include a timer, uh, but this one will be an on delay timer. Uh, that means that from the time uh, uh, from the time this float switch will get a signal, this drain valve will have to wait for one minute as the agitator motor is running. And then after the agitator motor stops running, then the drain valve will open. And so we shall introduce a timer. It will be an on delay timer. Let's call it T2. Here for the time value, it will still be one minute. Also, for this to happen, the start memory must be storing a bit logic of one. So we shall include a normally open contact and call it M0.0. .0. And here we shall also include another normally open contact for the float switch I0.2. Here again, the stop signal will be our reset signal. I0.1. But now again, we need another signal that will reset this timer when the float switch will indicate that the mixing tank is empty. And we know the float switch can only give a 1 or a 0. It gives a 1 when the tank is full and a 0 uh, when the tank is empty. Therefore, we shall have to use the float switch signal as another resetting signal for this timer, but we'll have to invert it so that our program can function properly. And so I'll include a normally open contact here. I'll give it the address for the float switch i0.2 and here I'll include an invert bit logic not let me download this program to a virtual PLC so that we can see whether it will work I'll give the start button a signal I0.0. .0. It's a push button, so I'll give it a signal and then withdraw it. As you can see, solenoid A and solenoid B are immediately activated. At this moment, we assume that the, the mixing tank is being filled. And after it is filled, the float switch will give a signal, I0.2. And the two solenoid valves A and B will close and then the agitator motor will start running immediately. It will run for one minute. After one minute is over, we expect that the agitator motor will stop and the drain valve will open. The agitator motor has stopped and the drain valve is now open. Now let's assume that the tank has been drained everything and so I will withdraw the signal from the float switch. And we can see that the drain valve has closed. And again, solenoid valves A and B have opened. And thus the cycle continues. Uh, let's see what will happen if, uh, if I press the stop button, I0.1. As you can see, our stop button has stopped everything.
so that's it guys thank you for watching i hope that you have learned something from this video and kindly subscribe to our channel